Kyrie, you, you obviously have won. You've won division of titles before. How does this one feel? It feels great. Um, we earned it, and uh, we did it under uh, some crazy circumstances uh, and within our season, just injuries, uh, trades, um, just uncertainty on how we were going to figure out the defensive end. and. Um, just a lot of expectations on our team at the beginning of the season, personally or individually, and then just externally from kind of the basketball cultural world, knowing how special me and Luke are. But we knew that we, not, we weren't going anywhere without uh, us having some great guys alongside of us, um, playing selflessly, and then us playing selflessly and putting our best foot forward towards being better leaders every day, uh, continuing to get better. And I think that mentality led us to 50 wins. Um, so it's a total organizational effort, you know, top to bottom. So I just want to give a huge shout out to the to the people that have been in the trenches with us uh, this whole entire time, and that helped us get to this point. Speaking, speaking of that defense, just tell us about what you guys were able to do tonight. Force 19 turnovers, and I know the, the Heat had a couple of 24 second shot clock violations there in the fourth quarter. Um, we just tried to make it tough and adjust uh, to their pace tonight. Um, you know, both teams were coming off of uh, back to back, so uh, you know we knew it could go either way, just in terms of the pace and how the game started. And I think we got off to a decent start uh, in that first quarter, and then we never looked back since. So you know we're not going to have quarters like that every game, but when we get off to a good start like that, uh, we continue to play defense and we are just adapting to the pace of the game. I felt like we did a great job of that, and uh, that's what led us to this victory tonight. Slightly off topic, but I believe this is your first game post-Ramadan, mm -hmm. and uh, I wondered how, uh, what it meant to you. Uh, from what I understand, the, the organization really embraced the fact that you were going through, had Ramadan, mm -hmm. and also being able to go through it uh, alongside uh, Sham God. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what that meant to you, you know, as a person, just personally going through that spiritual experience, feeling support from the team. Yeah, um, I mean, there's four billion Muslims around the world. And there's 9 billion people in the world, so I think anybody could do the math <laughs> in, in terms of that. In terms of just, uh, you know, when you're feeling like you can't do it for that day, you just got to remember that you have brothers and sisters around the world that are, um, you know, going through that journey with God uh, with you. And it just is a lot of comfort. Um, you know, some painful days where you, you think you're hungry or you are you think you can't do it, right? Or you just want to give up and... It's just that uh, that inner voice that just continues to speak to you. Just you can do it. it you're not alone. Um, you know all those things attributed to the success, not just during Ramadan, but um, just as I put uh, my best foot forward within my life and, and just continuing to mature and giving glory to to God all the time. Um, so this was my first game post Ramadan, but um, you know it was it was really just another day in the office. Um, you know that, that was it. Um, because again, like I told you in the beginning of Ramadan, this is an individual journey, but it's also about the family. Uh, it's also about the spiritual aspect of it and growing. I don't want to dive too deep into it because some of the basketball world doesn't like to hear all this, but I do. So those that are listening, I wanted to share with them that I love you and uh, I couldn't have done it without you. So Sham God, and alongside a lot of my other brothers and sisters, we did it together and uh, we came out stronger. Um, so it, it was in honor of all oppressed people around the world. Um, you know, those that are dealing with being uh, innocent targets in the middle of wars. There's a lot going on. So for me, it was, it was bigger uh, than just the game of basketball and, and playing well. It was just about continuing to stay on my dean. This is a, Kyrie, this is a terrible segue because we're going from a real topic to a trivial one. But the organization obviously made a big statement with the T-shirts pregame for Luca. How, just how important? Was that message, do you think? And and yeah. why isn't your backward partner getting more love in that race? <laughs> uh, man, it, it was a statement. Um, you know, but we, we all knew uh, how special this year was going to be. And I say we just in that locker room organization. We knew how uh, special this year was going to be just based on our practices, what Luca was doing, showcasing that all the time, uh, really being more vocal challenging his teammates, challenging me, uh, and doing it in his own way. And I think that's a true sign of MVP, of coming into a season and really initiating himself into that leadership role and doing it 
on both ends of the floor. Uh, his stats speak for themselves. He's first in you know a lot of different categories. He's uh, you know held the team up when I wasn't able to be in the lineup and I was injured. So there are a lot of factors that attribute to his MVP case. And me as a brother of his, I, I have the utmost uh, love and support to give him during this time because I want to see him win MVP. If it's not going to be this year, it's going to be in the eventual future, in the near future. Um, he's mastered uh, different nuances of the game, and he's continuing to explore his abilities and his talents, and it's beautiful to be a part of. So, um, you know, the shirts mean a lot to us to represent him, um, but I think the most important thing he wants to do is win, and he's always put that first. So he, he has a, a huge responsibility on this team every night. He knows it, um, and it's our job as brothers to make sure that we alleviate him of some of those responsibilities and make sure he knows that we have his back and we know how special he is. So, well, You've had a good amount of time now with PJ and Daniel Gafford like to you know, continue to build continuity defensively and use different defensive schemes. It seems like you guys are doing more switching and different pick and roll coverages. Mm -hmm. How do you think that will prepare you guys for your outlook heading into the playoffs? I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I, I, I think I'm done giving out some of the secrets. <laughs> I think it's up to the other teams just now start watching film. We have uh, different adjustments we can make. We've shown it over the past few games. And uh, I think now it's, it's just kind of about staying silent and getting ready for teams building uh, whatever game plan they have for us and whoever we have in the first round. No disrespect to your question, but I think we've done enough talking for us <laughs> for the season. And we are who we are and um, ready to take on some challengers. Guy, you've gone through a lot the last 24 months, and obviously last year you were not part of the postseason. You've known for a while that you were going to be part of this one. Now you know the opponent. Just what is being back on that stage and having this opportunity with a team that's obviously capable of doing something big? What does that mean to you? Uh, it means a great deal because that was uh, the first time I had dealt with failure at that type of level. At this, you know, at, at my age, being 30 and being in the prime of my career and not necessarily being as healthy as I would have liked, but I felt like we had a, a good enough team to at least get into the postseason. And when we didn't, uh, it hurt me in insurmountable ways. And uh, I, I couldn't get uh, any redemption until <laughs> um, I turned the page and I was ready for the next chapter, the next phase, right? It's uh, about moving on. And uh, it was tough, especially as a competitor. You fail in front of the public eye, and you have all these you know, external voices coming at you and telling you who you are and what you're not going to do and what you're capable of. And um, part of the human experience is not negotiating with yourself about what you want to achieve. It's just going after it. And I think that's what we did this season. We, we faced a lot of unforeseen circumstances, and we dealt with them, and we kept uh, just our head high and, and, and kept our, our spirits very positive. And I kept encouraging guys. And you know, I look back kind of like two months ago and where we were when we lost six games in a row. And, and you know, fast forward to now, we're in a good space. And we just know that the job isn't finished and we're just getting started. But we do have to celebrate the, the small wins. And tonight was that step in that direction of just celebrating a small win just to get the 50 wins. Some guys in that locker room have never experienced 50 wins, experienced being in fifth place or fourth place or playing against a, you know, a veteran ball club potentially in the Clippers. So we're looking forward to that challenge while also uh, showing our humility towards uh, the game of basketball and make sure we continue to put the, the work in that's necessary for us to separate ourselves in that postseason because that's what it's about now. You know, We've done it in the regular season. That's good and dandy. But now this is where the grown-ups uh, start to use their IQ, start to use their emotional intelligence, their physical uh, intangibles, and made the best man win. Kyrie, I'm not sure how you guys are going to handle these last two regular season games, but it's going to be 10 or 11 days before you play a meaningful game, game one against the Yes. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yes. That sounds great. You said 10 to 11 days. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm not taking that for granted at all. <laughs> yes, sir. So, so how do you stay mentally prepared to get ready for that game over a week from now? Uh, we create healthy challenges and practice for ourselves and um, show each other different looks and um, just be realistic with uh, what this series is going to take to win. Um, you know, that's just the focus now, getting in uh, as great a shape as you can in the next, you know, kind of week and push yourself is, you know, you're going to be in the high minutes value or uh, played. Uh, that's me personally and some of the other guys in the locker room. We're going to need to play different roles. So 
just got to continue to work on our adaptation out there and then our player to player adjustments and nonverbal communication. And we'll be okay. PJ, you guys are the division of champs. How does that feel? Because I know you've been, never been in this position before <laughs> in the NBA. <laughs> Feels great. I mean, uh, 50 wins. Um, it's a it's a exciting thing in this league. I mean, it's not done by too many teams. So, for us to be able to uh, get 50 wins and uh, obviously win our division it is great. So, I'm excited where we're at right now, and I'm excited to head into the postseason. And also, from an individual standpoint, how does it feel to bounce back after you know the game you had last night? Feels great. I mean, honestly, I wasn't really too excited with my game last night, but we won. So, uh, I was happy we moved on to Miami. Obviously, got a great win and a, a great team effort tonight. So. Um, I think we did well on both sides of the ball, and I'm just excited. In this run of 16 wins in 18 games, you guys have been the number one defense in the NBA. What? Why are you guys now the? You know what? What changed? Uh, just having pride on that end and being physical. Uh, we try to come into every game and uh, bring physicality. Um, I think. Everybody's done a great job of that and being able to talk on that end and being able to switch. And I feel like we can do pretty much everything defensively. So uh, just being able to be versatile on that end is, is great for us. What was, what was the mindset of the team, uh, PJ, when they cut the 25-point lead down to eight? Uh, just to keep playing, uh, to take it one step at a time. Obviously, uh, we know they're a great team over there, so we can't take them for granted even if we are up 22. So um, we had some mental lapses right there in the third quarter, but uh, we had a, a great way to close it out, and um, I'm just glad we got a win tonight. And how do you guys stay focused when you the next meaningful game is the playoff game against the Clippers in about 10 days, 11 days? Um, for us, um, we have a goal, and... Um, nothing's going to stop that. So for us, it's, that's our main focus, uh, no matter who we're playing. So um, we're always hungry and uh, excited for the next next opportunity to go out there and play. Before, before the game, during sh you know you guys are warming up, you guys all wore the t-shirts. When did you find out about the t-shirt? Uh, when I walked into the locker room, that was my first time seeing them. So um, for any of y'all who don't know what it means, it means uh, real MVP. So. Um, just credit to Luca for the season he's had. Uh, he's a special player, and I'm just excited to be able to play with him and, and watch his greatness each and every night. So um, he's a real MVP. What was the reaction when those T-shirts came out? I mean, did you almost kind of feel like that was a another team bonding situation? Yeah, I mean, we were trying to wear them uh, during the game, but they didn't let us. So, <laughs> but <laughs> everybody's excited to, to have his shirt for sure. Pick it back on that. What are your thoughts on that? Because it seems like everybody around the NBA is talking about all the other top players in the NBA except Luca, as far as being the MVP candidate. I don't know why. Um, I think his resume shows, and I think his resume is better than anybody else's resume. Um, I don't feel like there's a, a complete argument for anybody that's that to be to have a better season than him this year. So um, we were fifth in the in the West right now. We got 50 wins and. He's playing the best basketball on the planet right now, so he's the MVP. MGM, Remix Sports Media. PJ, you have been a great acquisition to this team, you know, heading into the postseason. What are some things you're looking to do out there on the floor to go ahead and help your teammates out on a nightly basis? Uh, being aggressive defensively, um, just trying to hit open shots, and uh, just uh, taking it one game at a time, whatever coach asks me to do, uh, I'm more willing and able to do that. So just trying to go out there and, and be a plus for my team uh, in any way I can. Southwest Division Champ, Jason, how does that sound? Sounds great. Um, I think uh, we can check the box on one goal and, and being able to achieve that. Um, again, on the back-to-back, -back, I thought the offense was at a high level. Um, we came out, we were aggressive. Uh, and then our defense, again, to be able to hold an NBA team, you know, like the Heat under 100 points, um, just shows where our defense is right now. What does that say about the team? When Luka got in foul trouble there in the first quarter, you were able to increase the lead at that time. Yeah, I think it's just the trust and chemistry that we have. It's, you know, when um, Luka got his third foul, um, it, there was no panic. We bring in Kai and we extended the lead. We continue to play defense at a at a high level. Um, being able to work Josh uh, back into the fold to be able to get his minutes, um, you know. So there was a lot of positive things. Um, we felt like we were in control of the game. Uh, maybe for five minutes they took control, but I thought the response uh, for our team, you know, tonight on the back to back, uh, just shows how far we've come since uh, October. 
he's he was holding the shoulder that late. Yeah, I think he's fine. I think he's fine. Um, I hope he's fine. Uh, this was your seventh uh, road win in the last eight attempts and ninth in the last 11th. Uh, and your 25 road wins is the most since the championship team. Uh, what importance do you think do you place on that, if all, if at all, especially going into the playoffs? Yeah, I think it's just a special situation when you look at um, the overall from start to finish. And we're not done. We have two games left in the regular season, and then uh, we'll prepare for the playoffs. But uh, just uh, from where we started, um, and then you know you look at the trade deadline to make a change. Um, sometimes the changes take a little bit longer, um, and then understanding the Western Conference and where that stands and, and to be a, to, a, to achieve 50 wins um, here in the last uh, three years, two out of the three, we've done that. And so um, we're building something, um, and now it's just a matter of being healthy and continue to keep working on our habits. Jason, is there an advantage to, I mean, you were going to get a week anyway, but is there an advantage to knowing, getting a few extra days, knowing what the matchup will be? Yeah, I think uh, being able to get some rest here, um, We'll look uh, when we get home about Friday and then also uh, Sunday um, and, and go from there. But then also um, we don't know if it's Saturday or Sunday and uh, we'll have to travel Friday or Saturday to uh, who, who we're going to our next opponent. So uh, but it is it's good, you know, to get some rest. Um, but also sometimes you, you want to keep playing because of the rhythm um, and, and where we are as a team. But. I think we've passed a lot of tests. Uh, the, next te the next test will be harder. Um, but right now, to be able to rely on our defense and, and sharing the ball, I thought, again, the ball was moving. Um, and just understand when other guys are getting shots, make or miss, you know, just everyone's happy. So it's, it's a great thing to see. But uh, the rest is going to be important as we go forward here. And we asked you pregame about Luca, why his MVP candidacy isn't a, isn't a bigger deal. Uh, not to repeat myself, but how is Daniel Gafford not missing a shot for weeks at a time? How is that not a bigger deal? I mean, have you, nobody's ever seen this before. How, how is this happening? How does he do 33 in a row and then 22 in a row and counting now? Yeah, um, it's, it's amazing what Gaff has done. When you look at his uh, ability, his catches and then finishes and some of the finishes, he, uh, he wasn't, you know, just easy putbacks. He was falling down. Um, I think just his confidence around the rim and in the paint is at a high level. Uh, the trust is at a high level. Being able to get offensive rebounds and to be able to put back and fight through some of the contact uh, just shows how talented he is. Um, but sometimes uh, when you have like Luca and Kai, sometimes you are overshadowed by Chase and Wilt just a little bit. Um, and but. I think he's going to chase Wilt for the rest of his career as long as he's with Kai and Luca. Uh, at some point, he 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 should break it. Uh, what were it's, you guys able to do from a defensive standpoint, particularly there forcing 19 turnovers and two 24 second violations there in the fourth quarter? Yeah, our defense is uh, is playing well. Um, they're executing with as as coaches what we're the game plan. Um, they're they're doing it at a high level. The trust between. The game plan and, and being able to execute it, uh, they're, they're taking it from the locker room um, and, and to the court. So uh, right now, everybody's hearing uh, the commands. Uh, we're protecting one another. I think that's one of the biggest things right now is the trust of, of help is there and uh, continuing to keep playing. And again, our, our big group, um, I think we're with that starting group, we're 17 and one, um, you know, somewhere around there. Um, and without Lucas starting in one of those games. And so um, just understanding um, we're big and, and we're experiencing our length and using our length. And I thought to, tonight at the rim, we got a lot of block shots from a lot of different guys. It just wasn't Gafford. It was D. Jones. It was P.J. being able to cover up and help one another. As Tim alluded, you now know that you'll be playing the Clippers. Uh, so in addition to the rest, uh, I know you have two more regular season games left, but in addition to the rest, how about the advantage or at least knowing who you're going to be facing? Yeah, I think it, um, the only advantage is probably the film room and, and the coaches knowing that uh, they don't have to prepare a uh, video for the other three or four teams uh, when you talk about one, two, and three um, if you were going to be in the sixth spot. And so uh, 
that's their advantage. Uh, the, so the film room is happy that they can just focus on the Clippers um, and also the coaches. But I think uh, before we get to the Clippers, we just have to continue to keep working on our habits, um, understand where our chemistry is at and our trust and, and continue to keep making that stronger. Coach, you've uh, done a good job as a team holding Jimmy and Bam and just the Heat in general to kind of some you know, ineffective games for their standards. You held them to 20 combined points today, and you held the Heat as a whole to, I think, about 12 shots at the rim, and they did not convert well at the rim or in the short mid-range. Is the game plan for you guys to kind of jam the middle for them and just in general pack the paint versus the Heat? Yeah, well, we know they like to drive middle, um, and that's what, if you let them get middle, they're going to pick you apart. Um, and they'll find their shooters. Um, we were trying to keep some of those guys off off the three-point line. Um, we got to do a better job with love. Uh, but just sending them to the rim, understanding uh, with uh, Gaff and, uh, and PJ and Derek, that the guys and Maxie, uh, that were big enough to contest, and then we're also just trying to keep guys off the free throw line. Um, that's one of the issues that you know we've had is that we've been small where we can't protect the rim and we've given up um, a lot of uh, layups. But here of late, um, since the last time we played Miami, we've gotten really better, you know, uh, at the defensive end, and the trust uh, has just grown since. Yeah. Coach, you're an NBA champion. What qualities do you see on this team that makes them uh, a legit title contender? Well, I think the the biggest thing is. is um, they're a team, you know. I, I know, and we talk about Luca and Kai a lot, but there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle that makes this thing go. And so, uh, very similar to the 11 team, um, when you talk about Dirk and, and Jason Terry, uh, they had a lot of older guys uh, that didn't get the attention, but knew their job and did their job at a high level. And it was just all about winning. And I, and I think when you talk to these guys, it's all about winning. No one is into the stats. Um, there will be some individual awards here for some of those guys that deserve it. But at the end of the day, it's it's all about team and they care for one another. I know it's a it's a nice problem to have, but how do you expect you'll handle pretty much 10 days without a game that matters between now and game one? I know you have the two left, Friday, Saturday, or Friday, Sunday. But then you get several days off and yeah. teams don't teams haven't practiced a lot, obviously. Like how do you stay sharp in that? And the Clippers will be dealing with the same thing. A lot of teams will be, but yeah. how does that gap work? Yeah, I think, you know, just understanding the All-Star break, uh, we've gone through that, and uh, we were playing well before the All-Star break, and we came out of the All-Star break and stumbled a little bit. So we'll talk about that. Um, but also, uh, we got to work uh, and uh, be prepared. Uh, there will be some time off, but also there's going to be time where we can work on our mental side of the game to, to get better. So um, probably a lot of film, which guys sometimes don't like. But uh, just being able to prepare for the Clippers mentally and then um, being able to stay on the court and, and keep a rhythm, that will be the biggest thing. Coach, congratulations for the victory. Thank you. JC Guerrero for Hispanic Sports Media. You are one of the best point wars players in the history, passing the ball, assistant players. And you represent all kind of players like John Stockton or Steve Nash. But what do you think about the new generation of, of, of Pine Words? Players like uh, Luka Doncic, players like Stephen Curry, they changed the game. And what's your opinion about that? Thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the game is in a great space right now when you talk about Luka and Steph. Uh, when you talk about the younger players, Anthony Edwards, um, the game is being played at a high level. Um, Maybe there's not positions uh, anymore. Every you know, everyone is 6'10", who can handle. Giannis can play point guard, um, but I think just the game. When you look at guys averaging 10 or 11 assists, uh, they make the game easy. Uh, they're students of the game, and so uh, you know when you talk about those names, uh, Curry and and, and Luca, uh, the game is in a great place. And passing, when you look at Luca, I, I'm spoiled to see him every day. Uh, he's always shown us something different. Um, but he understands how to play the game the right way, uses the pass uh, to help get what he wants, uh, but also to help his teammates succeed. And so um, I think it's in a great place. Yeah. MGM Remix Sports Media. Coach, your team has been having a lot of success as of late. 
How much of that success as a unit can be credited to the energy and the sportsmanship coming from the bench on a nightly basis? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we, we're truly believers of the energy. Um, I think when you look at the bench, uh, they are a big part of that um, because a lot of times as we talk about the starters or the star players, uh, the energy of that bench is big and they truly believe they have an impact in the game. And so uh, they don't get a lot of the credit, but since you bring up a, a great question, it's, it's a big part of our, our culture. It's about cheering for one another, and, and they truly believe, Dante, Timmy, those guys cheer for the starters, and we talk about it, the starters cheer for, for those guys who come in for them, and that's, that's what makes this team special.